In this video, we're going to have a look at the Meiki 3.5mm f2.8 circular fisheye lens. This lens is specially designed for micro four third cameras and it can capture the field of view of 220 degrees. It means it can not just capture everything in front of the lens but also behind the lens as well. And the best thing is this lens is only US $159. So is it too good to be true? I'm going to share with you all the pros and cons in this review. Kia good morning everyone, Rich Wong here, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a pre-production sample of the Meiki 3.5mm f2.8 circular fisheye lens. Meiki, they made quite a number of different fisheye lens. On my channel, I reviewed one of the APS-C fisheye zoom lens just a little while ago. So today we are going to have a look at this latest fisheye lens specially designed for micro forward camera. So biggest thing about this fisheye lens is that it can capture 220 degree field of view either horizontally, vertically, and diagonally. So this is a ridiculously wide field of view. That means not just capture everything in front of lens, but also behind the lens as well. You may remember last year, I have done a review of the Lauer 4 mil f2.8 circular fisheye lens. That lens also has a 220 degree field of view. So in terms of spec, it is very similar to this Meiki lens. So in this video, I'm going to do some direct head-to-head -head comparison of these two circular fisheye lens and see how is the performance of these two lens when you compare them side by side. Okay, let's start by talking about the design and build quality of the lens first. This Meiki 3.5mm fisheye lens is made of metal. Pretty much the whole lens is made of metal from the housing to the mount at the back and even the lens cap is also made of metal and the lens cap fits in very nice as well, uh, not too tight, not too loose. It is quite a small lens so you can easily fit it into your pocket or um, one side of your camera bag but if you compare it with the Lauer, put them side by side, you notice that the Lauer is quite a little bit smaller. Now, usually for a similar spec lens, I would definitely prefer a smaller lens. But in this case, there are some reasons that make me prefer the slightly larger size of the making lens, which I will talk about very soon. This is a full mechanical lens, so there is no autofocus and there's also no electronic contacts at the back of the lens. At the front of the lens is the focus ring. The travel is quite small, it's about only 60 degrees or so. But this is not really a problem because fisheye lens has a very deep depth of field so you don't really need very precise focusing so 60 degrees or so is fine and the focus ring itself feel pretty nice as well and then at the back we have the aperture ring here from the maximum aperture 2.8 all the way to the minimum aperture f16 now one thing i don't like is that the aperture ring uh, doesn't have clicks it's the clicked aperture ring I personally definitely prefer to have clicks, especially I feel this lens is mostly designed for photography. So I would definitely prefer if the aperture ring has clicks because the lower lens, it does have clicks. It has a very nice aperture ring at the top with clicks. So this is definitely my preferred aperture ring. But apart from that, the aperture ring on the Meiki lens feel very nice. And I also like the fact that the focus ring and aperture ring, they have a different design. So when you just grab and hold the lens, you will know whether you are holding or moving the aperture ring or focus ring. So that will minimize the chance that you mistakenly change the incorrect ring. Overall, there really isn't much I can complain about the build quality of the Meiki lens, especially the lens is only $159. I think the build quality definitely is more than what I expected. Before we go and talk about the image quality, I want to talk a little bit more about this lens and just explain to you what makes this lens so special. As I have mentioned at the beginning of this video, this lens can capture field of view 220 degrees, um, no matter you're measuring horizontally, vertically or diagonally and you can capture perfectly rounded circle photo with this Meiki lens which is better than the Lauer because unfortunately with the Lauer when you use it to take photo a tiny bit of the topmost and the bottommost 
of the photo that you capture got cut off, which doesn't happen with this Makey lens. With the 220 degree field of view, it can capture everything in front of the lens and also a little bit of behind the lens as well. This allows you to create some very unique photos. For example, you can just hold the camera and just put it above your head and just point it upwards. And if you take a photo that way, you can capture 360 degrees of scenery all around you. So this is something even a normal circular fisheye lens cannot do. And remember I said while the size of this Makey lens is a little bit bigger than the Lauer, this is not actually a downside and the reason is because the extra size of the lens, um, when you mount it onto your camera, the extra thickness would push the front element slightly uh, in front of the grip. So if you are using a micro forward camera with a normal size grip, for example like my G85, the front element would now be in front of the grip so that means when you take a photo the grip wouldn't be inside the photo unlike the lower the lower one of the issue that i found with the lower is if you are using for example my gt5 again and you take photo in all the photos you will see the grip is inside the photo because this lens is quite a bit smaller so the front element is actually pretty much on the same level as the grip and because it can capture pretty much everything in front and also a little bit behind so it would also capture the grip of the camera but this is not a problem with the Makey lens but having said that you still have to be very careful on how you hold the camera if you don't want to have your fingers inside the frame. Um, I can't show you the J5 because I'm using it to film this video. But um, okay, for example, if I pretend this is the J5, if I normally like I will hold the camera like this when I take photo. If I do this, notice that the finger, these fingers will be inside the photo. So I do have to hold the camera like this and take photo like this. Then the finger wouldn't be inside the frame. So anyway, I think this is definitely another area that the Makey has some advantage over the Lauer if you are using a camera that has a decent size grip. If you're using something like uh, Olympus Pen, then it doesn't really matter because you wouldn't have problem with the grip inside the photo. Another pretty cool thing about this Makey lens is that it can focus as close as 9.5 cm. That means you can use it to take some photo of a very close up object and still in focus and the maximum magnification when you're taking photo at the minimum focus distance is 0 0.1 which is pretty good for a fisheye lens. With the lower lens the minimum focus distance is a little bit closer at 8cm compared to the Makey which is 9.5cm. This does give the lower a little bit higher maximum magnification. Look at these two photos I shot at the minimum focus distance with these two lenses. You can see that the lower does give you a slightly higher maximum magnification ratio. With the very close focus distance and also the fisheye view angle, this allows you to create some photo that exaggerate the distance and size and also the perspective. For example, if you look at this photo, I'm just taking a photo that I put a Lego draw in the front of the frame. And because I'm just using the difference in the perspective, in the photos, it almost looks like the Lego drawer is a lot bigger than the objects in the background. But in reality, this is definitely not the case. So yeah, this is just one of the way that you can use this fisheye lens to create some very different and fun photos. Another thing I want to mention when using this lens to take close up photo is because of its very close minimum focus distance which is like only centimeters in front of the front element and also the super wide field of view that it can capture. So you have to be really really careful if you don't want to cast your own shadow onto the photo that you are taking. Another interesting thing I found is that this Makey lens is actually quite a good and fun lens to use if you want to shoot some frogging or similar kind of video. The reason is the field of view is really wide and also the depth of view is also very wide as well. So you could easily 
um, use this lens and just point the camera towards you and don't have to worry too much about the framing because the very wide field of view so you will pretty much be always in the center of frame as long as you point the camera roughly towards you and it can capture everything around you so that would be great if you are doing some travel vlogging uh, because it helps you to capture everything and because of the really deep depth of view you can just set the focus distance to something like around 0.5 meter or so and set it to um, f5.6 then you can point it to yourself and you'll be in focus and if you point it around and point it to the front and all the foreground objects will be also in focus as well so yeah you don't need to worry about focus or anything like that it's very easy to use okay you may say okay I don't want my video to have the black um, it's not border it's the back area in the side that is easily fixable. Most of the video editing software, for example, if you're using Adobe Premiere Pro, there would be a lens distortion control thing you can use. And using that, you can apply a bit of distortion control and that can help you to get rid of all the black area on the side. And the result is a video that looks almost like just capture using a normal ultra wide angle lens, but with a super, super wide field of view. Because the lens is actually quite light, it's only around 190 grams, so you can mount it on a DJI Inspire drone if you have uh, one of those X5 series camera module. That means you can use it to capture some really wide angle photo or video from the sky. Unfortunately, I don't have a DJI Inspire drone myself, so I can't really test it and share with you my experience. Okay, now let's talk about the image quality and let's start with the sharpness first. With the Makey lens, if we look at the center sharpness at the maximum aperture f2.8, the center sharpness is already pretty good. Stop down to f4 or f5.6 would only slightly improve the image sharpness and I would say the maximum image sharpness seems to be around f5.6. And now let's look at the corner or I should say edge sharpness at the maximum aperture f2.8 maybe apart from the last 5% or so which is soft the rest of the photo even at the maximum aperture is still pretty decent in terms of image sharpness stop down does improve the sharpness a little bit and it seems the maximum edge sharpness is also at around f5.6 Compared it with the lower, I think the overall image sharpness seems to be very similar. The lower may be slightly sharper, especially if you look at the very extreme edge. I think the lower at the very extreme edge is definitely sharper than the Makey. But apart from that, I think both lenses are pretty decent in terms of image sharpness and very usable even at the maximum aperture f2.8. Lens flare is quite often a problem for a lot of ultra wide angle lens, especially fisheye lens because it has a big front element that is extruded and you don't have lens hoop to protect it against lens flare. So when I was testing this lens, lens flare is my biggest concern. But after testing it over the last week or so and I took a lot of photos, I have to say Overall, the lens flare control is actually very good. It's not perfect on the bright sunny day with the sun that is directly in front of me uh, with no cloud or anything to cover the sun. I do have a little bit of lens flare, but the amount of lens flare is, I think, is very well controlled and very acceptable. I never really have any serious lens flare issue with this Makey lens no matter I have a very strong light source directly in front or near the side of the frame. Uh, the lens can handle lens flare very well compared to the lower. If you have watched my lower formula feature lens review, I've mentioned there's a bit of lens flare issue with the lower lens. So overall, I think the uh, Makey does better than the lower. If I look at my side by side comparison photo, quite often the Makey would have noticeably better lens flare control than the lower. If you like having sun stars in your photo, with the Makey, you can stop down to around aperture f8 and you can start having some sun stars in your photo. Stop down to the minimum aperture f16 and you can have some pretty nice looking sun stars. But when I look at the photo that I shot side by side with the lower lens, 
I would say I prefer the Sunstar from the lower lens while both lenses are set to the minimum aperture f16. In terms of distortion, well, it's not a fisheye lens if it doesn't have distortion and the Meiki lens have lots of distortion and that's why we want to buy a lens like this. One thing that just have to be very careful if you have not really shot with a fisheye lens before is just slightly tilting or turning the camera angle a little bit can dramatically change the distortion and as a result the composition and the output of the photo so when you're taking photo just be really careful how you frame the photo just uh, or experiment with it because sometimes you just change your position angle a little bit and you can have a very different photo with the Meiki lens, there is a small amount of vignetting at the maximum aperture f2.8. Stop down to f4 would already remove most of the vignetting. And this is very similar with the lower lens as well. At the maximum aperture, there is a little bit of vignetting. And once you stop down to f4, then it becomes not really noticeable. And one thing I noticed when I was reviewing this vignetting test photo is all these photos were shot with a fixed white balance setting but if you look at the photos you can see the photos from the make it is slightly warmer than the photo from the lower lens which is slightly cooler this is something i also noticed when i was looking at my other sample photos but with this set of vignetting photo because it has a pure white background it makes it more noticeable as a reviewer i have the privilege to test and play with a lot of lenses many different type of lenses some are like um, 2470 f2.8 or 15 mm prime lens those are very very popular lenses most of you would have one in your camera bag or more than one uh, but we think those lenses sometimes could be a little bit boring how is the newest 50mm f1.4 lens different from the other 5 or 10s that I have tested in the last few years? Probably not a lot. And then sometimes I got to review some very special, very unique lens like this Meiki 3.5mm circular fisheye lens. This circular fisheye lens, especially with its super wide field of view, is not really suitable for taking the normal everyday type of photos. But this is why I like to review this kind of special lens because it is different, it is fun, and it is really, really fun. I may even call this lens the Eye of Sauron from Love of the Rain because it is really powerful and it can see and capture everything. As long as the camera is pointing towards you in your direction, you can't escape from this lens. And even if you want to escape and try to go behind the lens, the chances are it can still capture you in the photo as well. The overall image quality of this lens is also pretty decent. There is no real weakness of this lens in terms of image quality or the area that I talk about. The performance of the Meiki lens is pretty decent. And if I compare it with the lower, I would say overall the difference between these two lenses is very small. Some area the Meiki does better and then some other area the Lawa does better. I think both companies did a very good job creating such a nice fisheye lens that really pushed the boundary that can capture such insanely wide field of view. And with the price of this Meiki lens is only $159, I think that makes it a lot more attractive than otherwise it would be because to be honest, a uh, circular fisheye lens is not a lens that you will be using every day. If you buy this lens, the chances are you'll be using it a lot in the first couple of weeks or maybe a couple of months. And then you'll probably just put it one side and only use it every now and then. If this lens is a lot more expensive, if it's 499 or 599 then that may make it a lot harder to buy because you know this is not a lens that you'll be using it every day. But at such a low price, $159, I definitely wouldn't feel so bad if I only use it every now and then. And also because the size of the lens is quite small, so I could easily just put it on one side of the camera bag and just carry it with me all the time. And when I need to use it, and then I will bring out and capture some photos. Okay, so I just share with you all my test results of this Meiki lens, how I feel about it, and also some of the comparison with the lower lens. 
What about you guys? Will you be interested in buying this Makey lens? Let me know by leave a comment in the comment section below and I can have some more discussion with you after this video. Thank you very much for watching this video and I will also see you in my next video.